Hi everyone. So in this video, I'm going to charge on a 350 kilowatt charger at the new GridServe installation in uh, Braintree. And uh, the idea of this video is um, just to see what it is actually like charging on a 350 kilowatt charger with a Polestar 2. Now, I already did a video using the BP Polar system. Um, that was within the first week of having the car. But uh, I thought it would be nice to do it again, this time after a longer drive. So we covered about 85 miles and uh, 86 miles. And uh, just to see what a real world scenario is like in the winter, temperature outside is four degrees. So it's very cold, um, lots of uh, lots of moisture. Um, the, te the battery temperature is not not going to be that great. So we'll see what kind of a charge we get on this, um, this charger. And uh, yeah, Please uh, subscribe and like, and let's see what happens in this particular charging experiment. Okay, so we're ready to get started with the charge. Um, this is the charging unit. So you can see we've got, uh, it's a uh, really nice brand new. And the whole, the whole concept here is contactless payments. So keeping it nice and simple, um, so you don't have to do too much. So uh, yeah, well, let me just get my bank card out and we'll get started. Okay, so the first thing I think is really useful, it, it tells you in clear steps what you're supposed to do. Connect your vehicle, tap contactless device, or press the tick button for RFID and press X to stop and disconnect. So unlike um, some of the other charges we've seen, you know, like even Ionity, it doesn't really tell you what order to do things. You know, it, it's ambiguous. And the the electric blue charges in Brighton, the, in those videos, okay, they're only seven kilowatt, but they have no instructions on them. So uh, they may change that to be fair, but okay, let's get started. So um, I'll pop open the uh, charging hatch. And uh, so let's connect up the car. So the CCS plug seems to be a reasonable I can never get these plugged in easily. These are always so difficult to do. So you've got to remember to unplug the little plug at the bottom and then try and wrestle this into place. And if you're holding a camera, it's even more difficult, but uh, managed to do that one handed. So we've got that plugged in. And uh, now all we need to do is to tap the contactless card over there. So it says processing, remove card. And what have we got on the screen? Verifying, you are allowed to start charging. Preparing to charge, setting up communication with the car. So, so far this looks like an incredibly easy process. Um, I have seen, you know, so many different versions of these charges, Shell, BP, um, Ionity, and they can be quite complicated to use. This one, this could not have been easier um, and you know it's it's apparently it's charging already there we go so six percent and we're charging like there's no there's no fiddling around no hassle and that's the way electric charging should be okay so the only problem i may face here is that uh the the charging unit unfortunately doesn't show you what charging rate you're getting so um what i'm going to do is to just monitor the charging speed that we're seeing in the car on the screen um we can of course calculate like roughly what uh, overall um charging rate we get by the end of the charge because we'll be able to see the time and the number of uh, kilowatt hours of electricity delivered to the car which will give us an overall average but to actually see the charging graph um, is much more difficult because the car itself, unfortunately, doesn't show that. Um, so many other vehicles do. I wish it would show what you're getting. You know, if you're if you're plugged into a 150 kilowatt charger, what are you actually at? Are you at 50? Are you at 90? Are you 120? Um, that is useful information, but the car display doesn't show that. Um, what it does show, though, is charging speed in miles per hour. So if you take a look at this. That's the charging speed right now in miles per hour. So it's showing 155. And uh, that, that, that's, a, that's a really tricky one because that kind of number is based on trying to estimate how many, um, how many miles you're gonna travel per kilowatt. So yeah, I, is that actually a realistic range? Um, that's one of the, the, the things I've been trying to work out um, over the last couple of months, because you want to know that if you're if you are if you need to do 100 miles and it says 155, roughly how long you're going to have to charge for. But is that realistic? Are you actually going to be able to drive that number of miles on the motorway or is that going to be town driving like like I've been saying with the range estimates? So these kinds of things can be a little tricky to figure out. But what I have worked out so far with charging is looking down at my notes here, I can see that um, 
what I'd written down to try and figure this out is um, is worked back example. So on a 50 kilowatt uh, polar charger, I was getting around 130 miles on the display and I had worked out that I was getting about 47 kilowatts. Now there'll be some charging loss. So say it's about 45 actually going into the battery, but let's assume it, it was the full amount uh, at 50. So if I calculate that back 130 divided by 50, that shows that the car is using say a multiplier of 2.6 miles per kilowatt. So if we use 2.6 to work back as an example, now at 12% on the battery, we're at 189, divide that by 2.6, then you could assume roughly 72 kilowatt charging. Um, now this is, this is a rough example. It would be much better to see that on the display, but um, I'm gonna use that as a rough way of working out where we're going with this particular charging cycle. Okay, so let's do a, a, do a check here. 15%, we've got 226 showing on the display. Divide that by 2.6, that's 86.9 at 15%. So we've reached 20% now and charging speed has increased a little bit to 274 miles per hour. Um, and that uh, again works out as 274 divided by 2.6, 105. So we're seeing a nice increase in, uh, in the speed. So we're approaching 30% now and the display is showing 240. Uh, it's wobbling around here, yeah, 240. Divide that by 2.6 and we are 92 on the, uh, the reading there. Okay, so we're coming up to 40% now. We're showing 252 and uh, divide by 2.6, 97 kilowatts. And uh, yeah, it stayed 252 at 40%. Okay, so we're about to reach 50% now in the charging cycle and we have uh, reached a charging speed now. It's gone down a bit to 184. Mm -hmm. So 184 divide by 2.6, 70 kilowatts. And uh, yeah, that, that's quite a big uh, reduction in speed. So that might just be an indication of of uh, now it throttling back from 50% onwards up to 80% and then from 80% onwards it gets even worse. But let's just see how it progresses for the next uh, next little while till we get up to 80%. So we're approaching 60% now and uh, charging speed is slowed to 150 miles per hour. Divide that by 2.6 and we've got 57.7 uh, .7 kilowatts. Okay, so we've reached 70% now and a display showing 152 divided by 2.6. You know the drill now, uh, we're at 58 kilowatts. So 10% um, more to go. And then once we get to 80%, we'll have a look at the last reading. Okay, so we're reaching 80% now and it's slowed down to 63 uh, miles per hour. So that's exactly what we'd expect. Divide that by 2.6 and we're getting 24 uh, kilowatts. And uh, yeah, now that we've reached 80%, there really isn't any point carrying on because it just uh, it just slows it down significantly. But the charge uh, here at um, grid service is only 24 pence per kilowatt, which is which is really great. So you're not really wasting a huge amount of money if you do have to stay. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, if you if you're hanging around anyway, you might as well carry on charging. But I'm going to stop the charge now and I'm going to move uh, move the car and then park up and have a look at the uh, the whole grid serve um, installation. Okay, so just to get an idea of the overall charge that we managed to uh, achieve today, uh, we've got 60.8 kilowatts over 46 minutes. So, well, it's it's coming up to 47 minutes. So let's go for, let's see, okay, 60.95, divide that by 47. And then if we times that by 60, we get 77.8. So 77.8 was the overall uh, kilowatts that charging rate for the entire charge. So we saw a higher number earlier on. I think the peak that I mentioned in the video was 105. So that was the peak that we managed to achieve. But taking into account the gradual slowdown uh, as the charge went on up to 80%, that's the uh, 77 is the, uh, the average for the entire charging cycle. So um, that gives you an idea of what kind of benefit you're getting from charging on a 150 kilowatt charger. If you were to charge this on a 50 kilowatt charger, you would, um, you'd be getting say 48 kilowatts. So 
you are getting a, a good benefit from charging on a, on a 150, but again, the difference in the winter when the battery is cold may not be as significant as you might think. And uh, it could be worth considering whether you need to rush your charge. So if you can get to a 50 kilowatt charger and you could pay maybe 12 pence, 15 pence on Polar, for example, that's a lot cheaper. So it'll take you a little longer, but it might not be as bad as you think. Now here at GridServe, um, they have on this side, they have the option of uh, these 90 kilowatt chargers. So um, they're exactly the same units, but they've got the Chatermo plug and the CCS as well. Now you could, in theory, with the Polestar, just charge on the 90 kilowatt unit if you want to. And it's not really gonna make much difference because we only got 105. So in theory, uh, it doesn't really matter which charger you were to use at a site like this. The price is the same no matter what. So you could use the 350 if you want, but if they were occupied, you're not really getting punished by using a 90 kilowatt, especially in the winter. So how could you actually get 150 kilowatt charging? Well, the truth is that it's, it's quite difficult. Um, you need a warmer battery for that. So Polestar would need to implement some form of battery heating. And uh, there are rumors, I did ask Polestar if they were intending to do that. And the answer was, yes, they are. But whether or not we'll see that, I, I don't know <laughs> if that's possible via a software update. But um, if you could, preheat your battery when you're you're approaching your charging destination that would help you get a faster charge uh, the other thing is obviously charging in summer when the battery's warm that will solve that problem but um does it really matter i don't know it depends how long you're willing to wait i mean as we saw there it was just over 40 minutes to go from six percent all the way up to 80 percent that's not that bad. If you could shave off 10 minutes, yeah, I think that would really help a lot of people if, you, if you're traveling a lot of mileage in one day, but um, it's not really um, life-changing as far as I'm concerned. Um, from my point of view, I tend to like to chill out while I'm stopped. So I hope this video has been useful, gives you an indication of uh, how these 350 and uh, kilowatt chargers would work and uh, the kind of speed and the rate at which things will charge at in the winter when the temperatures are really cold, um, around four or five degrees. If you could, uh, yeah, please like, subscribe down below. That would be great. And I'll see you again with another video very soon. Thank you.